You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore Media's Market Fresh, live every Thursday evening right here on Crush 92.5 FM. Now broadcasting live from the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo, here's your host, Randall White. And a very good Thursday evening to you as we kick off another live edition of Market Fresh here on Crush 92.5 FM, a full hour version, which is pretty cool. We uh, kicked off the show in February at a half hour long, kind of worked out most of the kinks, and now we've uh, expanded to a full hour because, hey, let's face it, where we live, there's so much to talk about when it comes to fresh food, seasonal food, and just the bounty that we have to enjoy here along the Central Coast. I am your host, Randall White, sharing my passion for fresh foods with you each and every week. You know, you can watch a video simulcast of the show online. It's live as well uh, at eatdrinkexplore.com or by using our free smartphone or tablet apps. So that's uh, one way to uh, go about it or listen right here on The Crush. Uh, We broadcast Market Fresh from the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo each and every week, right above High Garris Street between Osos and Moro, so we can watch and listen as the city's famous farmer's market comes to life, which is happening before our eyes right now. In fact, the trucks are pulling up, getting getting ready to start up the grills. That's about it. We're about a half an hour away from uh, smelling some of the uh, meat cooking and that sort of thing, but... uh, and I think the street gets shut off around 5.30. So you're seeing plenty of activity outside right now. But it'll really uh, pick up. Last week was a very busy farmer's market. It was fun to watch because we had such nice weather. We're not as lucky tonight. <laughs> it's going to be a little cooler. We'll have the forecast for you in just a minute. Our goal, simple, to get you in touch with the acronym FLOSS, which stands for Fresh, Local, Organic, Seasonal, Sustainable, F-L-O-S-S. Uh, We're physically at the downtown slow Thursday night market, but we highlight offerings available at any one of your favorite San Luis Obispo or Santa Barbara County markets. All right, this hour of Market Fresh Radio is brought to you by San Luis Obispo's Edible Magazine, featuring everything fresh and seasonal along our treasured stretch of the Central Coast. Edible is free to pick up at local farmers markets, grocery stores, and a variety of other spots. You can follow Edible Slow on their, or you can follow their regular posts at facebook.com slash edible slow or on their website, which is edible, S-L-O.com. All right, straight ahead on this hour of the program, we're learning the secrets of spices. And we'll take a look at one very unique California blend in particular, something uh, that isn't to our knowledge made anywhere else. And I'm getting the uh, affirmation, no, it's not, (laughs) just across the room from me. We welcome Anna Frumis on the show later this hour, part of our Edible Magazine series, heard here on Market Fresh about once a month. Then in the 5.30 half hour, it's time to blend up some seasonal springtime soups with the author of Central Coast Farmer's Market Soups. She's simply known as the Soup Lady at several San Luis Obispo County markets. Many of you listening right now are like, I know who you're talking about. Uh, that's right. Stephanie Burchill joins us and uh, we'll get her spin on cooking with ingredients that are fresh and local. And we have a copy of her book to give away. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that. <laughs> so... Um, It'll likely be through Facebook or Twitter, possibly email. But um, if you want a copy, signed copy of Central Coast Farmers Market Soups, uh, stay tuned because we'll explain (laughs) coming up here how to give it away. I just have to decide how I want to do that exactly. (laughs) A interesting article in Wines and Vines regarding the Central Coast that we'll talk about coming up as well. But in the meantime, you are listening to Market Fresh here on Crush 92.5. Uh, join us online. It's twitter.com slash eat, drink, explore, facebook.com slash eat, drink, explore, or just visit our website, eat, drink, explore.com. I'm your host, Randall White, and we are back in just a moment talking spices and a little new weather, too. It's Market Fresh on Crush 92.5 FM. 
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. It's time now to tap into the Market Fresh Grapevine for the latest news affecting the fresh food and beverages that you love, and you do love those fresh foods and beverages. Am I right? Uh, Avocado prices are on the rise especially for the larger sized Hass variety, according to the Packer.com. California growers didn't see a bumper crop this winter, but uh, so far this month, crop sizes are looking up. It's the fruit size, though, that seems to be the problem. They're on the small side. A demand has remained strong for avocados throughout this whole period. Growers in Mexico have raised their prices in response by more than 30%. The quality of the avocado is great across the board from both California and Mexico. So take advantage of what you find at tonight's market or any one of your local farmer's markets here in avocado growing country. That's for sure. And you don't have to stick with the Hass. There's so many other varieties out there that are fantastic. I grabbed one the other night at the market and I wish I had asked the name of it because I got it home and opened it up and it was the most beautiful avocado, first of all, on the inside. And then the taste was just out of this world. But I just don't remember the name, the the type, you know, that I got. I know it wasn't a Hass, so I'm going to go back to them tonight. Maybe I can. Maybe a bacon. It was not a bacon either, nor a Fuerte. It was one I hadn't heard of before, and that's why it didn't stick with me. As for the crop report, walnut groves are beginning to bloom in California, along with the start of spring, and pruning is underway in some walnut, pistachio, and olive orchards. The almond bloom is pretty much finished, according to the uh, USDA. Grapevines around the state. Producing uh, regions are still in the early or pre-bud break stage. And uh, blueberries are beginning to bloom in some areas, too. Citrus crops, including oranges, lemons, and mandarins, are still being harvested. So look for a lot of fresh citrus at your market tonight, as are Hass avocados, like we mentioned. Italian squash and spinach apparently developing well, we're told. And the weather has been especially kind for the onion and garlic crops, which are a couple of my favorite for sure. All right, let's take a look at weather at the market now. And in a word, seasonal. Uh, We're pretty much right on target for where we should be this time of year. The temperature at market time, 53 degrees when people can start selling prepared food at 6 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock, when they roll up the carpet, it is uh, 46 degrees, about 10 degrees cooler than where we were last week, which was an absolutely beautiful farmer's market, uh, to be sure. The sky, looking outside, looks pretty blue. The forecast calls for a few clouds out there. Nothing to worry about. No need to bring an umbrella down to the market tonight. Winds are on the stronger side, 20 miles per hour out of the northwest, and they are cool. So, layer (laughs) Like, you don't know how to do that on the Central Coast, right? We do want to encourage you to visit us tonight online via our Facebook and Twitter pages. You can uh, hashtag Market Fresh on Twitter. And you know what? I think that's how we'll go ahead and do this. If you're a big fan of farmer's markets, then you don't have any problem uh, throwing down a Market Fresh hashtag to uh, win a copy of Central Coast Farmer's Market Soups. Uh... We'll be discussing this book later on. We have a recipe online for you as well. It's a a split pea soup using fresh local ingredients. And uh, we have a signed copy of the book to give away. So what we'll do is um, we'll take the uh, people who tweet a hashtag of Market Fresh and then um, 
you know, randomly select one of those. So uh, get onto your Twitter account. And again, it's hashtag market fresh. Pretty easy. If you use Twitter, you know what all that means. <laughs> right. All right. It is time now to welcome our first guest for the hour. And I just realized here that, uh, hold on one second, I have the wrong, there we go. And uh, it is Anna Frumis, right? Do I get that correct? Correct, yes. Okay, because uh, Anna told me yesterday that no matter how many times she tells people how to pronounce the last name, they never get it right, right? Never, <laughs> never. But I did it. <laughs> but I respond to everything, so we're good. <laughs> well, that's good. Anna is the founder of Anna's Spices here in San Luis Obispo, and uh Anna, you have some really unique blends that we'll get to in uh, just a moment. But let's talk about how you sort. This was not your path, you know. <laughs> like some people, no. some people they uh, they know when they're young what they're going to do, and then they take all those classes and they do everything along. Your road sort of turned at some point, and here you are. Well, yeah. I mean, I started out like I had. Um, I talked to you a bit earlier about I had. What, I was born in Northern California in a small kind of farming community. Yeah. My parents owned a restaurant. And so I actually began with food and the, the the toys my mom left me to play with in the cradle and the crib were, were spice bottles. Spice bottles. <laughs> so I've come full circle. I did start out with spices and foods. Um, right. But... I've since gone into science. Uh, I've worked in international affairs and politics. Um, but all of my experience has led me to travel around the world. Right. And um, although I do have some formal training in cooking in France, all of my training that I was a is applied to what I do right now really does come from working in home kitchens all over the world and um, full circle like I said from the crib to now I'm mixing spices I'm back again doing exactly what I loved when I was a baby yeah you've lived in several countries uh, you mentioned France uh, yes. you were also in Ukraine I lived in Ukraine for almost three years and you don't say the Ukraine right no it's it's really bad to say that in, <laughs> in some right. circles um, it is Ukraine Mm -hmm. And it's not Russia either. <laughs> That's what some people have said. <laughs> um, Ukraine, I have uh, worked in kitchens in Thailand, in Spain, um, in the Middle East, uh, and I worked in several different, different international homes and kitchens in New York. So... A lot of varied flavors, a lot of varied tastes, uh, which is what I do now. I, I kind of blend flavors that remind me of the places I've worked in, in including oh. the Congo and Africa, uh -huh. um, to make different blends that are what I consider the perfection of food from those regions. Not in any way, shape, or form are they traditional mixes. They're just the things that I think of when I think of a flavor palette from those regions of the world. So all of my spice blends that I produce come from my personal experience and loves of the foods around the world. Do you lean a certain way? Like, do you lean toward uh, sort of heat spicy or toward sweet? Or do you have a... I don't. In fact, my philosophy is flavors aren't perfect unless they are a magical blend of sweet, spicy, salty, sour. It's a perfect balance. And I really do try to get that balance into every single one of my seasonings so that you do have that flavor palette and those spice seasonings are ready to taste. You could just spoon them and they have that mixture in the palate versus one that's too hot, one that's too spicy, one, yeah. and one that's too sweet. I try to get that mix just ready to go. There are several secrets to good cooking. One of them is getting the spice mixes down exactly right. And you you sort of take that step out for people who are trying to get <laughs> a dish right. You, you've got the blend all ready for them. I do. I try to make it easy for people who are inexperienced with food. If you just want to be able to make something that notch up on flavors, yeah. that's what my spices are there for. But if you are a really experienced world chef, my spices are there for you to experiment with new flavors and blends as well. And so I've tried to create things that are fun for 
all cooks of all types around the world. I um, can't wait to talk about uh, one of your unique blends that's right here in California and the only one that we know of that uh, blends up these specific ingredients. We'll talk about that when we come back and continue our conversation with Anna Frumis, the founder of Anna's Spices. It's Market Fresh on Crush 92.5 FM. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com, the California Love business recommendation tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor. downtown San Luis Obispo. Here's your host, Randall White. 519 the time now on this uh, Thursday evening. A little chilly outside, but it's not too bad. It, you know, there's no rain in the forecast and you can throw on a couple of layers and get all the fresh produce that you need uh, 
and entertainment on top of it here at the Thursday Night Farmer's Market in downtown San Luis Obispo. If tonight doesn't work for you, there's a market, I think, every day of the week. There might be a day that's missing in there, but I don't think so. I think Tuesday used to be the whole before, but they have the one out on Broad now uh, that is the Tuesday Night Market. So... We're spoiled. <laughs> we are so spoiled. And that's why our show has expanded to a full hour because uh, with a market every day of the week and the volume of fresh produce that comes from the Central Coast or, or directly surrounding the Central Coast, uh, you know, you need a full hour to discuss that. Good evening, everyone. Great to have you with us. We are speaking with Anna Frumis. She is the woman behind Anna's Spices. You can find Anna online at annaspices.com. You can leave out the apostrophe, even though it's possessive. They don't have a space for that in uh, URLs. So uh, annaspices.com. And check out the blends that she has. Anna, would you say your most popular blend is the California Fresh? The name of that spice fits this show so well. But yes. But California Fresh, explain what's in that and why it is so incredibly unique. Well, it is my number one seller by, by a ton. And the reason is because it's so unique. It actually is a spice that contains a real avocado that's been dehydrated and powdered. So in each bottle of California Fresh, there is a dehydrated full-size Haas avocado that is mixed with ingredients that I think are the best of California, which include rosemary, garlic, honey, tomato. It's a beautiful blend that goes on everything, and it is really, it's a real avocado mixed in with this spice blend. You hear, <laughs> you hear, you know, uh, when, when I was growing up, there was an ad campaign that said, uh, it's like, two full oranges in every pill or something like, you know, and, but you never hear that a full avocado in every (laughs) jar, you know, (laughs) but uh, in your case, and you were telling me that the guy who patented this way of making an avocado powdered uh, is the only person in the nation to have this technology. He is. And um, as of right now, I am the only person who is distributing product with the dehydrated avocado. So wow, um, it is a really unique blend. You're not going to find it anywhere else. It's no. all natural too. Um, some people have said, oh, well, I can go get the guacamole mix or something and oh, add water. No. It's not real. This is real avocado. Um, it's dehydrated and it tastes so so good. It is really like butter in a bottle. Oh, I like that. You said <laughs> you you even said that when it's all gone, there is a little bit of an oily residue left on the jar inside of the jar because because it's real. Because it's real. Yeah. And we know that those avocado oils are good for us on top of it. Absolutely. Good for your skin, good for your mind, everything. It's really it's fantastic. It's um and it does. It combines a lot of other fantastic California flavors to it that mm-hmm. are good for you as well. It seems to me like this type of seasoning would make a great finishing powder, something that you would put on top of savory dishes uh, that you want that seasoning not necessarily mixed in, but right there for your tongue to grasp. Well, it's a great seasoning in the sense that it is. It's perfect for a finishing. You can put it on top of a salad, a sandwich. I mean, I do use it as kind of one of those table spices. You put on everything, Uh soups, and everything (laughs) that I have, I add a little bit to it at the end as well as cooking with it. I mean, you can bake with it. It is one of those you can add to things, mixtures of creams and chicken and all of those wonderful cooking and baking recipes that you have too. It's 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 versatile and it's really yummy. I mean, toot toot, but it is yummy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, so the California Fresh would reflect your experience in California. You said that all your spices really sort of harken back to uh, earlier periods in your life where you look you take those flavors as almost like a like a memory book. Yes. Uh, and you you gave me a sample of a spice yesterday that was Thai influenced. Yes. Uh, what's in that one and how do you use that? Well, so Thai flavors in my head, the way that I think of Thailand is the basis of the mindset of using a balance of flavor. Mm-hmm. So in Thai food, there really is that complete 
um, thought process that goes into balancing sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. Yeah. And so I use uh, the flavors from Thailand that I know and love to to balance those those types of flavors. I use a Kashmiri pepper, which is a nice spicy Southeast Asian pepper to make it spicy. Um, I have a lime juice that's dehydrated, and that adds that sour um, flavor to Dehydrated it. lime juice. Dehydrated lime juice. It's Everything I use is all natural. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan big fan and proponent of using natural foods and eating locally and seasonally and and naturally. So um, therefore, all of my spices include as many local products as I can include right. um, and also as all natural products as well. So like I said, that Thai spice is a great balance of those mm-hmm. things. Lime juice, spicy, lemongrass, garlic, all of those wonderful flavors from Thailand in a perfect balance. I didn't realize you could dehydrate lemon lime juice, but um, I guess that m- makes sense. I use a a spice. I'm embarrassed to even say what it is, but <laughs> it's a, it has um, a like a lime lemony kind of taste to it. And I put it, I make my own beans at home, mm-hmm. and uh, the pinto beans will uh, start to turn dark and a weird color. But I found that if I put this on top of it, because it does have some sort of concentrated like lemon lime sort of thing it stops that process so i would imagine your thai spice would do the same thing for people that don't want browning of certain uh, produce or beans it can and Mm -hmm. all of my spices that do have i have a lime juice lemon juice and orange juice that i have dehydrated that are in several different products that i mix together um those do they are i mean they have that basis they're all natural products of but they have that citric acid in it that does help that that process of not browning. Mine's not all natural, and I need to switch to your spices. <laughs> mine, Sounds I'm good. I'm trying to remember the name. Oh, tahin. You know tahin? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a <laughs> but it's good on popcorn. I, I would imagine you probably have like a popcorn spice, right? Or maybe I, the avocado one would go well on popcorn. I think, you know, I love putting spices on popcorn. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a perfect blend. Especially butter is supposed to stick to something, right? Mm-hmm. Not just the popcorn. So... <laughs> Um, in fact, at the Palm Theater right up the street, we we have uh, the Old European, which is an herb and truffle seasoning, ah. um, and the Thai spice seasoning, and perfect on popcorn. Yesterday when we were chatting, uh, we talked about how spices can be so healthy for you, the different uh, spices. And you mentioned a spice that I had never heard of out of, I think it was Ethiopia? Well, it's, I mean, it's a very, it's fenugreek is the spice. Mm-hmm. And it is, um, I use it mainly in Ethiopian cooking. I see. But it is out of, it's used in Middle Eastern, North African through and through. Oh, okay. Um, and it's grown throughout Northern Sub-Saharan Africa as well as the Middle East. And I believe many parts of uh, Western India, it's also grown. So it's a, it's it's readily used and grown throughout the world. It's just not one of those that we use as a table spice here yeah, in, right. in, in in the U.S. What was the other one that you mentioned that isn't necessarily heavy on flavor, but it's heavy on color? Turmeric. Turmeric. That's Turmeric. Right. And very good for you, mm-hmm. like we talked about. Um, very, very beautiful color. It adds that yellow naturally to any foods that you want. Um, it does have a bitter kind of taste to it, but all in all is a, a spice for flavoring. I don't use turmeric as much because it is, it's a very mild flavor. Um, and if you add too much of it, it does add a very bitter aftertaste to okay. it. Yeah. We, have, we have about a minute left, and I know that you have a recipe cur- in the current ep- uh, issue of Edible Magazine that people can pick up tonight at the farmer's market if they want, right? Uh, so uh, w- quickly, within 10 seconds, what is, what's the combo there? Well, right now, like you'd mentioned, in season are lemons. So I have an asparagus lemon pizza recipe. It's really delicious. Asparagus is also seasonal right now. Pick up some asparagus, my citrus salt, uh, my European and truffle herbs at the farmer's market, and a little bit of uh, pizza dough you can make yourself. It New Frontiers a- Market is a good place to pick up your spices. Also sold at New Frontiers um, and Morrow Bay and... Pismo it's Beach Market from Fresh Farmers Market. Crush 92.5 FM. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to 
qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com, the California Love Business Recommendation Tool. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. downtown San Luis Obispo. Here's your host, Randall White. And a very good evening, everyone. Great to have you with us here on this Thursday night, Farmer's Market Night for downtown San Luis Obispo. Higuera Street really just turns into a completely different world (laughs) from, let's see, from, is it Osos? Yeah, from Osos all the way down to Nipomo. You have several blocks of uh, fresh produce, Freshly made foods, prepared foods, everything you can think of, and then several streets with uh, entertainment venues as well. We'll talk about those coming up in just a little bit. Uh, During our last couple of segments, we had Anna on the show, uh, Anna Frumis of Anna's Spices, and you really have to check out the different spice blends that she puts together. It's annaspices.com. And then she has a free recipe for you, uh, 
in the current edition of Edible Magazine. You can find a complete list of places to pick up your free copy of Edible Magazine at Edible Slow, S-L-O, uh, Edible, S-L-O, uh, dot com. That's also their ending for their Facebook page, so facebook.com slash Edible Slow for more information. All right. Our guest this time around for the 5.30 half hour is Stephanie Burchill. She is known in many circles as the soup lady, <laughs> depending on which market you go to. Probably in uh, Los Osos is where you're best known, Stephanie? Well, that was my very first market. I started in Los Osos and then um, ventured up to Cambria. And then about two years ago, I started in Morro Bay. Oh, okay. So uh, you hit up several different markets then, um, three a week. And you you three were just, week. were you just in Morro Bay I before you got here? I was just in Morro Bay. I actually was walking downtown and realized I still had my apron on. <laughs> 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 but it was a beautiful, windy day in Morro Bay and had a good turnout. So for you, beautiful means cold soup weather. Absolutely. The <laughs> foggier, the rainier, the windier, the better for soup. <laughs> uh, I, we, are, we shared one of your recipes on our website if you go to eatdrickexplore.com and then uh, click on the recipe section you'll find Stephanie's version of split pea soup there uh, really interesting the way you walk people through that recipe mm -hmm. uh, in it, for how to make it and we can do that coming up here in just a little bit but uh, you shared a story that at the Los Osos market one time it was so cold you sold out of of how much split pea soup in about 25 I think minutes? we went through about 15 gallons of split pea soup in 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> People elbowing each other mm -hmm. and like, get out of the way. Well, one of the big um, selling points for the soup is you can bring your own mason jar down to the oh. farmer's market and have it filled. And on those especially blustery days, those mason jars come out Yes, in droves. <laughs> and the Los Osos crowd would really be into that too. Uh, they bring, are. Yeah, bringing their own uh, stuff. Oh, all, all three markets. I have some very, very loyal Mason Jar customers who come every single week. Good. I see that. I see a few new faces every week, but I've got some real dedicated local customers that I'm so appreciative of. You're a local. I am a local. I grew up in Los Osos, out um, on a beef ranch, actually, out Clark Valley Road. Mm -hmm. And then um, ended up off Toro Creek Road, kind of in between Atascadero and Morro Bay. And your family uh, raises a Meyer lemons, Meyer which lemons. I have in my hand right here. And I've already taken my nail and uh, gouged a little piece of the skin and smelled it because it's so, it's like perfume, I think. It's Aren't so they wonderful. They're, uh -huh. just, they're such a fantastic lemon. Yeah. Dad's a farmer and, and um, certified organic farmer. And he also grows some organic kiwis as well. So these are organic? They are. C that I have in my certified hand certified and USDA certified organic. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And he was a kiwi farmer too? He was. The kiwis didn't totally go his way. And so he is focusing on Meyer lemons. Okay. Yeah. It was a good year for kiwi, I believe, here on uh, in California this year. I don't know mm -hmm. how There's your dad's There's quite a few new crop. growers I've been seeing in the markets coming out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So at some point, you decided... You know, I need to put a book together with all of my soup recipes. How yeah. did that? What you was know, the evolution of that? It, it really happened organically, I have to say. Um, no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, a friend of mine, Sam Peck, who's the um, amaz does all the amazing photography in this book. Beautiful photos. If Beautiful. you get the book for no other reason, absolutely. If yeah. you're not a soup maker, if you're not a cook, absolutely, just buy it just to see Sam's amazing photography. He's mm -hmm. he's such a purist when it comes to photography. He really no photoshopping, no, no photoshopping. Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, Sam. He he's all about waking up at the crack of dawn to get the right lighting. And uh -huh. I know on the cover we we had to go right at the right time so the sun was you know, directly in my eyeballs to shoot that shot. <laughs> you know, so often um, in my line of work, I've, we've had, I've had to have pictures, photos taken or video taken mm -hmm. at a certain time so that the lighting is right. And usually that right lighting mean, means you're staring right into the sun. Right into the sun. <laughs> your eyes are watering and it's so painful. And then you look at the picture, you're like, you look so happy here, but you were probably <laughs> tearing up. <laughs> I think so, possibly, after 200 <laughs> shots. And we finally got that one <laughs> right. to cover. It's a beautiful photo. This looks uh, like it might be uh, in the San Simeon area. It's actually right about a quarter mile north of Cayucas. Okay. Out on the Bluff Trail there. Yeah, so uh, the photo... 
because it's a radio show, I should probably explain, <laughs> uh, has you holding up like a chalk sign that says Central Coast, or you're leaning against a chalk sign that says Central Coast Farmers Market Soups, mm-hmm. uh, recipes by Stephanie Burchill. And it's, um, it is basically the title of the book on the sign. I it like is. that. And the, the reason we did that is that is the sign that all of the customers see at the farmer's market. So we wanted something kind of familiar and, and that it was Sam's idea. And I, I'm, it took me a while to be convinced of it, but I love the end yeah. result of it. Absolutely. I, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And so uh, is the farmer's market your main venue for distributing the book? You know, it's actually in about 45 retailers here in San Luis Obispo County now. Wow. Um, but yeah, I would say it's about 50-50. So uh-huh. they are available at all three of the farmer's markets that I work. So that's Los Osos, Moro Bay, and Cambria. Mm-hmm. Um, we do give a discount at the farmer's market if you come buy it from me. And um, I'll sign it for you. That's a, <laughs> You know what? It's great to have a personally signed book yeah. by whoever was the author of the book. It is. It's, you kind know? Of, it's kind of special. And we have a signed book in our hand right now by... Not just Stephanie, but also Sam. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you get both signatures, and we are giving it away on Twitter right now. All you have to do is send out a tweet with the hashtag Market Fresh. So hashtag Market Fresh. And what we'll do is, uh, because we announced this a half hour ago, too, we don't want to give preference to people if they're listening during a specific time of the show. So uh, we'll just take all the people who did a hashtag market fresh and then throw their names into a hat and do the old random drawing. But uh, your odds are good. <laughs> and it's a fantastic uh, book. What would you say your soup philosophy is? Do you have one? Oh, I'm all about the local ingredients. I mm-hmm. think, you know, local seasonal is... I personally, as a as a cook, I don't think that there's any other way. There, there's something just wonderful about buying produce directly from the person who grew it, and you know, even finding out what what their families are doing with the with the vegetables, you know, direct yeah. from the grower and getting tips from the grower. It's kind of a, a cool philosophy, and that's what I love so much about farmers markets is talking mm-hmm. to the because really no one knows how to deal with something more than the person who's growing it Absolutely. for years. Absolutely. <laughs> They've and seen and it in know, every form, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And they go home and they probably have a box of it. And they, what <laughs> right. am I going to do? How am I going to prepare all of this coal, Robbie? <laughs> you have to get creative. You because, absolutely do. Mm-hmm. And, and I get some of my best soup recipes from the actual farmer's market vendors. And so the split pea recipe that you have in here, mm-hmm. and let's face it, the Central Coast is really well known for split pea soup because mm-hmm. of the Anderson's signs, mm-hmm. billboards that have dotted the Central Coast for <laughs> decades. Decades. When I was a little kid, we won't talk about how long ago that was, but uh, we would take trips from the Bay Area down to Los Angeles. <clears throat> Most of the time we would not cut over to five. We would come down 101. And we'd start seeing those billboards you know anderson split pea soup coming up in 120 miles or whatever <laughs> <laughs> it was Effective it's, marketing, I suppose. <laughs> right now uh the anderson split pea soup i think has like bacon or ham in it or something right. yours is the vegetarian version yeah all my soups are vegan and and um that's just it's kind of my my culinary background is is in vegan cooking um and from a woman who grew up on a cattle ranch right <laughs> <laughs> Sweet irony. <laughs> right. I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, your trick for the split pea soup has mm-hmm. to do with the uh, way that you boil the peas. Exactly. You know, everything that anyone will ever teach you about cooking soup is low and slow. You know, you want to bring it to a boil over very, very low heat, simmer it over very, very low heat. Um, my trick to split pea is to do the complete opposite of that and just crank up the heat and... Um, I always I call them the little volcanoes that form and you get these huge <laughs> boiling bubbles of split pea and you have to be on it. It's not one you can walk away from, but because it could really it just could make a mess of things, or right? Blow up or, you know, yeah. all kinds of, and there's been a couple of kitchen accidents, but and so low and slow does not work with your version of the split not pea with soup. My version of split pea soup. I also um adamantly put in heirloom carrots so all those beautiful pink and yellow and purple and carrots. purple uh-huh mm-hmm. but you got to be careful that you want to get the, the the purple carrots that are actually orange in the inside okay. not purple all the way through or you'll get really uh, awful <laughs> colored split pea soup <laughs> oh yeah something more like the exorcist yeah you don't want that <laughs> So yeah, you don't, probably don't want that, right? No, no. You recommend uh, soaking the uh, peas overnight before... I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think 
in my in my philosophy of that really rapid boil, I think to actually give them a little bit of a head start is, is kind of an advantage. Yeah. Um, you don't have to soak them, but I, I do. Do you ever use pressure cookers? Um, I have in the past. I don't for my for my soup business. Yeah. Um, I like to have a little bit more control than a pressure cooker will give you. And it's really because you m- you miss by thirty seconds or and so. You're, you're done. And you're way off. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I really like to build my flavors. And I think just having an open simmering pot of soup allows me to do that. You know, start with the caramelized onions and then get your um, all your dried herbs and spices. I actually have used some of Anna's spices. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And then um, I love the camaraderie with farmers markets. Oh, uh, you came family. in and you're, oh, I miss <laughs> seeing you. I'm not at that market much anymore, and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. We are speaking with Stephanie Burchill. She's the author of Central Coast Farmers Market Soups. We will continue our conversation in just a moment. You're listening to Market Fresh right here on Crush 92.5. It's Market Fresh on Crush 92.5 FM. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com, the California Love Business Recommendation Tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor.
Market Fresh, broadcasting live from the heart of downtown San Luis Obispo. Here's your host, Randall White. Welcome back, everyone. 5.49 now the time here on this uh, Thursday evening. This is the final segment of Market Fresh, broadcasting each and every Thursday from 5 o'clock until 6 o'clock, just before San Luis Obispo's famous downtown Thursday night market kicks off. At 6 o'clock, the uh, people grilling up food can start selling their delicious bites. And then at uh, 610, they ring the market bell and the purveyors can start selling their uh, fresh produce, which is so fantastic. And if you were listening to uh, Anna of Anna's Spices on the show earlier, when she was leaving, she's like, I need to go get to my booth. And I was like, what? You're... <laughs> I didn't realize she was actually at the market tonight. So uh, you can visit her directly and say, hey, I heard you on the radio. Uh, Give me some of that California Fresh, which is her number one uh, selling ingredient. We are right now speaking with Stephanie Burchill. She's the author of Central Coast Farmers Market Soups. All the recipes in this book are hers. All the photos are by local photographer Sam Peck. They're beautiful Central Coast snapshots. Stephanie, there's a one picture in here that shows the Central Coast with the mountains behind and they're snow capped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the Nacimento Ferguson mountains up there. Kind of north of uh, Sand Dollar Beach a little bit. You don't see that, but maybe once every few years. Yeah, I think probably that's pretty accurate. Maybe once every two years you get the snow up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And Sam caught it. You said he's all about his timing. Sam's all about <laughs> timing. And I've, right. I've, I've actually learned quite a bit about photography, just kind of spending the year with Sam going through the markets because we started, you know, in winter and then and went through the entire year of trying to get all of the the seasonal produce photographed. Um, and so he actually at one point um, gave me a, a disposable camera uh-huh. because he was sick of my input. <laughs> <laughs> Said, here, take them yourself if yeah, you do. <laughs> exactly. And as you can see, he is the professional. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. Uh, Stephanie is the woman behind all the recipes in this book. You may know her as the soup lady or the soup woman at uh, mm-hmm. any given uh, market. Most notably, probably the, uh, I call it the Los Osos market, but it's actually Baywood, right? Baywood Park. Mm-hmm. Baywood Park. But like I said yesterday, it's, it's kind of all the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I never know if that's something that people will get angry about because really know. like Shell Beach is technically part of Pismo, right. you know, that sort right. of thing. I, don't, I grew up in Los Osos and to you, me, Los Osos is Los Osos. <laughs> yeah, you're like, it's okay. It doesn't, doesn't matter. We do have her Central Coast split pea soup recipe online and right there in the recipe, you will see a couple of references that say, see page 79 of the book, Mm -hmm. uh, when it has to do with soaking the peas overnight or cooling down the soup for refrigeration, preparing it for refrigeration. If you click on that link, it'll take you directly to the website for buying your book, Mm -hmm. which is produced by a local book company known as... Farmer's Market Publishing, which is actually a book company that Sam and I have started together. Okay, I was going to ask you if it was your publishing company. I love the name of it, Farmer's Mm -hmm. Market Publishing. That's what I know. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And so uh, you can go to farmersmarketpublishing.com. You can. And if if you don't find it through the links within the recipe. But I highly recommend going to the recipe because it's a version of uh, vegan split pea soup. And uh, from what I understand, it sells out really quickly. What are some of your other favorite springtime soups in here? I saw a beautiful picture of asparagus, and that's one of my oh, yeah. tops. It's, it's really exciting when asparagus start, first starts coming into the market. It's, it's kind of the um, arrival of spring, yeah. in a way. Asparagus, it signals that it, it's time to get going on the spring vegetables. And, and Mother Nature just did that for us yesterday, mm-hmm. was the official start it of the, the vernal equinox. The day earlier, day late, something like that? It was that. a day early, uh, <laughs> four, uh, it was like 4.06 in the morning or okay. something, our time is when the vernal equinox <laughs> hit. But today's the first full day of spring, mm-hmm. and so you can start looking soon for that uh, spring asparagus. It's and, really great. And you recommend, is the cream of asparagus soup? There is, there's a cashew cream of asparagus soup. So um, the cream is a cashew cream. It is. So it's just, it's raw cashews and a little bit of filtered water 
pureed up into a really fine cream. And mm-hmm. it, I think it, personally, I think it's just as good as, as a heavy cream substitute. I agree. You know, I mm-hmm. had a wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful enchilada dish down in Manhattan Beach. Mm-hmm. And uh, the chef is not a vegan. The restaurant does not cater to vegans, but it's their number one selling item. Mm-hmm. And their cream was either cashew or macadamia nut. I can't mm-hmm. remember, but mm-hmm. it was a nut cream. Exactly. And uh, I couldn't stop eating the enchiladas. They were so mm-hmm. delicious. Mm-hmm. I want to start making some of those creams at home myself. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really easy to make. They do. I would recommend if you don't have like a really super commercial blender mm-hmm. that you soak your cashews. Okay. Um, and then rinse them really well. And then you can just make them just with your normal blender at home that you... Same when you make your margaritas with. It makes sense because cashews have that sort of buttery taste anyway. They do. They do. And they're buttery, but they're also very neutral. And so you can, I know a lot of um, vegan chefs will actually use them in more of a sweeter application. Uh Or I definitely go more the savory route. Um, And you do have to temper them kind of similar to the way that you would temper um, adding any kind of dairy product to your soup, which means okay. that you bring it to the same temperature as the soup or whatever sauce you're putting And then in, add it? And then add it. Okay, mm-hmm. I was going to ask you my next question, and I, I think this probably falls along those lines. What are some just major no-nos when you're making soup? Uh, <laughs> and the last thing you want is for all your ingredients to separate, right? Well, absolutely. Absolutely, especially in soup. I, would, I think the number one no-no is burnt garlic because... This the tiniest amount of burnt garlic in the soup will make the whole thing taste like burnt garlic. Permeates everything. It does. It's the strongest flavor, and obviously, oversalting soup um, yeah. is a tough one. And there's actually a couple tips and pointers for what what to do if that should happen. Oh, good. Yeah. I had an oversalted soup just the other night. It was really everything about it was delicious, except there was too much salt. Right. <laughs> it was made at a restaurant, and I continued to eat it just because I wanted it you right know. exactly uh but uh over salting i couldn't agree with you more that's, that's just a tough one and the whole time you're eating it you know how terrible it is for and you how on good top it of could it. be yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> do you, you recommend using sea salt i do use sea salt i use a pure sea salt um I, you get a little bit more bang for your buck as far as sodium goes right so you can use about half the amount of sea salt you can um if you were using a conventional table salt well, Stephanie, you were nice enough to give us a book to a signed copy of the book. Both you and Sam signed it mm-hmm. of uh, Central Coast Farmers Market Soups. Uh, we'll put the word out one more time, and then following the show at some point, we'll uh, check to see how many people used the hashtag Market Fresh using their Twitter accounts, uh, and then we'll pick one of those names. And um, hopefully, it's a local that can just come by the studio here and pick it up. That'd be nice. <laughs> so exactly, <laughs> hand it over. Stephanie Birchall, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So we have about a minute left to let everyone know what is coming up should you head down to the market tonight. If you are uh, heading here to check things out, there's all that entertainment on top of the... Because it's really... This is like a gathering market. This is a place where you uh, come to see friends and hang out and socialize, maybe pick up some produce uh, and check out some entertainment as well. And tonight at the market, I have to pull up our uh, farmer's market uh, page here. (laughs) I don't have it right in front of me. Here we go. Okay. So tonight at the market over on Nipomo Street is Dance Obispo. That's always fun to watch. A broad street is showing the Saugus High School Marching Band and Color Guard coming all the way up from Saugus. Pretty impressive. Oh, they are. If you're watching us online right now, our radio station that carries us is already running ads. So, um, it's market thanks for joining us. Crush 92.5 <laughs> FM. Oh. So now you've got your time. Now you've got time. That's back to us again? No, wait. No, go ahead. Never mind. So you heard.